Howdy everyone, and welcome to yet another one of my guides for Equivalent Exchange version 6. Today, I will be going into the transmutation tablet, the specifics on the dividing rod and how to use that particular device, and also a little bit of the new information about the Klein Stars. Here you, I have, as you can see here, I have my crafting guide up already with my transmutation tablet recipe. As you can see, it requires you to have a philosopher stone, four smooth stone, and four obsidian. And then there's a portable version of it, which requires the transmutation tablet, four dark matter blocks, and four smooth stone. Mostly so what you're going to be doing when you start is you're going to have a basic one. And here we are in the transmutation tablet grid. It looks very similar to the old transmutation grid, except it's got a little bit of a renovation in the color scheme. And also, the uh, target lock is moved from the middle here to the center of the output grid. Now, in version 6, you no longer have all recipes available to you immediately. You have to take an item, like say stone, and drop it here in the transmutation grid. It locks in to matter, and then it pops up this learned, saying that you now know how to transmute other things into stone. And at the bottom here, it gives the EMC value of the block that's in the grid. Actually, this will actually total all the items in each slot together to give you a total. Since I only have one, it's one. And yes, stone is worth one. Now I'll go to my next block. I will take my grass block and I will drop it in here. Boom. And now it's learned. And now I can transmute grass block into stone. Because they're both worth one. I remove this here. Take it out. And you can see up here it has the transmutation, no lock. There's two locks. There's matter locks, which are most blocks, and then fuel locks. And the fuel are the is coal, charcoal, redstone, mobius fuel, alchemical, coal, eternialis, glowstone, and blaze dust. I don't have any blaze dust, but if I were to drop coal here, then you see the transmission will lock into the fuel, and it'll tell me it's learned, and it'll give me the EMC value of coal. And I remove it, and there's no lock. And I can drop my matter block. And then you have to do this for every thing, every item you want to get out of the transmutation grid, you have to drop into the input slot on the left. So if you want to transmute into iron, you have to find yourself some iron first, and then put it in there, boom, and it gives you the EMC value. Once you've learned it, though, if you ever put another item in there, enough items in there worth an iron ingot, you'll be able to get it out over here. Let's let's just drop some items in here and see what happens. Some wood planks. You know, and I got a selection of items here. I'm just kind of dropping them in and get different EMC values. I'll drop the diamond in. And now you can see, when I dropped the diamond in, I had to learn iron ingot and everything else I had up to this point is available for me to select. So I can turn this one diamond into however many of these I want. And it will deduct deduct one is from the MC because I took a cobblestone. If I put the cobblestone back, now I can get my diamond back. What I also can do is you can also drop tools into the grid and then transmute those tools either back into their components or I can take a diamond and see, I can get myself a shovel an iron shovel. You can do it with L. Now this will learn, this will teach you the undamaged version of the tool. If if you put a damaged tool into the grid, this output, it will only learn the undamaged portion. Now I learned, like, like you just saw, I put the diamond tool in there and it is damaged. And I learned how to make the diamond pickaxe. 
Now because it's damaged, I won't the amount of EMC that it's actually worth is less. So I won't get my see, I only get my two diamonds out of it because it reduces the cost. It's basically how the transportation grid works, you just have to acquire the item once, drop it into the left hand side, and then you can transmute to it from there. And Xeno has added EMC values for some of the Red Power 2 items. One of the other features of the transportation tablet grid is that you can place an item on the left and then in the center on the right you can drop your target. Now when you target it will automatically shift the grid so that the, your target is on the, in the top slot at all times. So you can click, 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 click to get however many you want to your heart's content. And this will work in any combination. You can target, say then I'm going to target my diamond and I'm going to place items. So that one didn't work. So you know, here we go. Put, oops, swap out the item. What I want to do, and I'll change. See, it's kind of neat. It's kind of nice. It's all very helpful when you're trying to find the item you want. You need more of. And you only have one of. This also works for fuels. So I to take turning Alice. There's not that many fuels. To be honest, this. Is if you were to put Eternity Alice, all the fuels would show up on the grid. So you've. But the nice thing about it is that it will always stay at the top. So you can easily get as many of that whatever item you're using. And next we have the Divining Rod. Here we are with the recipe for the level 1 divining rod. As you can see it's a stick and some low covalence dust. And then each level thereafter requires the one before it all the way up to level 3. And each level requires the next tier of covalence dust. So, and the 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 covalence dust now for the green is just a cobblestone and a charcoal to give you forty. And the binding rod at level one, honestly, the level one the only good use it's for is to get a level two. So you probably want to immediately upgrade your level one from level 1 to level 2. To get the level 2 you need these, the light blue covalence. The recipe for that is an iron and a redstone which is actually quite worth it for what the level 2 does. Now what they do. As you see here in front of me I have a grid laid out of 3x3 three three with the redstone torch in the center as my target. If I take my level 1 divining rod and I target the block behind the torch I right click down there in the chat log pops up a little text divining suggests a value around 28 now if I do that again I got 32 and do it again 27 24 this number is from all I can tell is completely random it is probably it is based on has some basis on the blocks that are behind it but not much but what it does do is it scans in a 3x3 three three area and then goes 16 oops, too close there <clears throat> what it does is it scans in a 3x3 three by, three by 16 block 
area and gives you a value. How that value is determined with the level 1, who knows. But the level 1 is mostly there to upgrade to the level 2. Also, the all the divining rods, the orienta the way you're facing the block will determine how it's scanned. So since I'm facing the block this way, and I click, it will go down this block brick of thir 16 by 3 by 3 here. If I were to point down, it would go 16 down. If I were to go underneath, say here, and go up, it would give me it based going up. Now that will become more clear what that actually means when I go to the level 2 here. Now the area that the level 2 scans is a 3 by 3 facing and then 16 deep. So it goes all the way down this whole entire, all the way down to the end where that torch is standing. So that's a good number of blocks. Uh, it's actually main use is to be used in, alongside a destruction catalyst because the destruction catalyst max charge is, is 16 blocks. So you can, you know, walk down your corridor and click on a facing and find yourself some good stuff. Like this one tells me 256, which means there is a block which yields a ingot that produces 256 EMC. So probably more than likely iron. So the same goes for if I were to click down. Click here. Do, the best found 2048. Ooh, there's something good down there. 2048 I, is gold as far as I can remember. So that's pretty good. Some gold down that way. And then our next, the next tier up is the level 3. And the level 3 is the same facing 3 by 3. You know, based on the center. And it goes 64 blocks. So And also, it suggests their value around 18. It gives you the actual average. Once again, uh, average EMC of all the blocks contained in that 3 by 3 by 64. And it will also give you the best found, the second, and the third. So this one gives you more, even more detailed information. So your top three EMC blocks. So like that one is 256, which is probably iron. Second, 128. I'm going to say it's coal is 128 and third 85 is probably this copper. I believe the copper is 85. Now, the same thing here. If I go back to this one square, I think it was uh, this one here. If I click on it in a 3x3, three three, there you go. It gives my best found, 2048, 85, and then 1. And then stone is, is 1. In fact, uh, I'm going to go down, run down a little list of EMC values that are uh, important. If you click on a facing and see 256 is iron, uh, 2048 is gold, and diamonds are 8,192. Important, other important ones is 730. If you ever get a 730, that means there's a uh, mossy cobblestone, so there's a, a spawner. Also, let's see, uh, if you ever get an EMC value of 16,000, that is tungsten ore, because it's supposed to be as double, as twice as rare as diamond. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty useful. I mean, you at least want to upgrade to the level 2, because level 1 is not reliable in any sense whatsoever. But upgrading to level 2 only requires an iron and a glowstone, but it'll make you, your search for finding iron, uh, iron, gold, diamonds, whatever, much easier. 